Rockers. If you just clicked on this video, then good job, because you just tuned in to Indie Rockers Ball. That's right, the only source for all things music. So Gage, are you excited to be hosting this week? Oh, you know it. I mean, I hosted last week for Press Start, and I thought that was pretty fun, but I'm even more passionate about music, so I'm really excited to get into it today. Well, you heard it here first, Rockers. Stay tuned, this is an episode you won't want to miss. The House of Representatives has announced that they are moving forward with an official impeachment inquiry of President Donald Trump. In the wake of this news, the 1973 funk single, Impeach the President by the Honey Drippers, has skyrocketed in its listens by about 1,053% in streams. That's a lot. The announcement was made on September 24th, and by the 25th, the song had received 52,000 streams, video and audio combined. The song was originally released in 1973 when the president of the time, Richard Nixon, was involved in the Watergate scandal. Well, which we all know eventually led to Tricky Dick's resignation. The song has also been sampled throughout the years by artists, including Janet Jackson and Nas. Great artists. So needless to say, it's a pretty well-known song. What other songs make you think of certain events, especially throughout history and even now? Let us know on Twitter at IRBTV with the hashtag Music News. Just a month after Taylor Swift released her seventh studio album, Lover, there's already been speculation about what the sound of her eighth album might be. One of the people who has been very vocal is none other than the 1975's frontman, Maddie Healy, stating her upcoming album is one that he would love to produce. This all started when Healy was in a conversation with Beats One host, Zane Lowe, talking about similar ideas they had for the album. Healy then stated, Taylor Swift doing an acoustic guitar record? I can't think of a record that would sell more than that. Like Taylor Swift's intimate return to country. Of course you'd want to produce that. Of course you do. The singer also took to Twitter, expressing his excitement for the idea. Unfortunately for Healy, he doesn't see Swift making that happen anytime soon. As much as we would love to see this, Healy states it is a step in her career that she is not quite ready for yet given that it would age her back into her country roots. What do you think, Rockers? Do you want to hear an acoustic al album from Taylor Swift? Let us know on Twitter at IRBTV with the hashtag Music News. Wow, I can't believe that song has over 52,000 streams. It's ridiculous. Like, I know. It really shows the impact that politics can have on music. It's like, uh, you know, Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire, Tupac's Changes. Very true. It's really interesting to see how historical events influence music that artists make. Oh, for sure. Speaking of, can you imagine what an acoustic Taylor Swift album would be like? Um, one word, flipping awesome, especially with Maddie Healy producing it. I think that's two words, but anyways, rockers, stay tuned because up next, we have our music lesson with Jet. Hello rockers, welcome back to another episode of Music Lesson. This week I'm gonna be teaching you 46 and two by Tool. So you're gonna be in drop D tuning, which is you just take the high E and you turn it down to a D. So it gets that open sound, like that. So this whole intro is basically just a tab and it kind of repeats throughout the song, at least through most of it. So what it's gonna be is, is it's gonna, you're gonna incorporate the open D into every two or three notes that you play. So you're gonna start by hitting just the open D, and then you're gonna to go to the A string and you're gonna go on the fifth fret. And then you're gonna to go to the third and then back to the fifth, so it's. So after you do that, you're gonna to go to the sixth fret and you're gonna slide down to the fifth in one motion, so it's, so it's. After that, you're gonna repeat the three to five again, and then hit the open E again, and you're gonna go down to the first fret, and down to the third uh, fret again. So that's basically the whole thing for three refrains. So when you play it all together, I'll play it slowly first, so it's. So you play that three times, and then the only thing you change on the last one 
is instead of going down to the first and then sliding up, you go to the D string and then you slide from the fifth to the fourth. So that what that sounds like instead is. And I guess you go up. At, the other thing you can change at the end is you go from the sixth to the fifth again instead of just add that one and three. So you play it all together, all four it sounds like. All right, that's basically how you play 46 and 2 by Tool. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. Kanye West's highly anticipated album, Jesus is King, is making headlines as previews and even a movie release has been announced. Just this past weekend, West played the album for fans in Detroit, Michigan. It's been reported that 1,000 fans were there. I would love to be a fly on the wall there. Despite the fact that the album was to be released on Friday, West's wife, Kim Kardashian, reported that, she was that he was still fixing up and mixing the final touches on this album. And it would end up being released on Sunday. According to Billboard, the album is decidedly hip-hop with exposition, using mostly spare keyboard and percussion parts throughout it. There is going to be plenty of space for West vocals, which will be the focal point of the entire album. As for the movie, The Hollywood Reporter reported that West worked with IMAX to create a documentary featuring one of his Sunday services. The film comes out in theaters October 25th. Hey music nerds, here's a tasty new track from the up-and-coming North Carolina-based rapper DaBaby. Intro is the first track from DaBaby since the chart champion Suge released six months ago and features a much more serious and sincere iteration of the typically comedic rapper. Fans are delighted by the lyricist's new style, solidifying him more than just a formulaic feature rapper. Known for his lyrics rather than production values, intro is a serious step up from his previous beats, compete with fast if nuanced rhythm. 2019 has proven to be DaBaby's breakout year with Suge going double platinum earlier this year among other chart-topping features on tracks with Lizzo, Lil Nas X, and Chance the Rapper. Intro serves a personal, a personal sobering look into the Beatmaster's life as well as an, as an intriguing and hopeful look into the upcoming album, Kirk, which was just released Friday, September 27th. Wow, that track by DaBaby is so dope. Oh yeah, me, I, I really liked it. I, I gotta tell you what, I really did like it. I can't wait till he comes to campus later. I think it's gonna be pretty fantastic. I wonder how much new stuff he'll do. No clue, but I mean, for me, it's just exciting to see such a big name come to the campus. Oh, it's gonna be a great time. And how about that Kanye album? He is such an interesting character. I really can't wait to see what the record ends up like. Yeah, I mean, like with Kanye being Kanye, who knows what's gonna happen, <laughs> especially considering since he already delayed it, but you know what? It's gonna be interesting nonetheless. Anyway, Rockers, make sure to stay tuned because up next is Rockers Review. Hey, how's it going, Rockers? We're here at Rockers Review. I'm Ian. Here's Liam, and here's EJ. We're all gonna talk about uh, something near and dear to the three of our hearts, and that is the Hella Mega Tour. I am yes. so excited for this tour. It's like, like 100%. Yeah. It's stacked. It's, yeah. <laughs> like 100%. The oh, second okay. that this was rumored, like, yeah. saying like they were all commenting on each other's Instagrams and like kind of collaborating behind the scenes, like we all wanted this to come. We oh, all yeah. were like, this better, this better okay. happen. So and the second we, they announced it. Before, yeah. I'm gonna cut you both off right there. <laughs> before we get into who was commenting on who? Who are we even talking about here? Y'all, y'all missed a big step here. Oh, so oh, yeah. let's talk about it. Who is who is Hello Mega Tour? So the Hello Mega Tour is sponsored by Harley Davidson. Is pretty <laughs> much going to be Green Day, Weezer, and Fall Out Boy. With and then the openers interrupted. Yeah. Which I see them three of the pancakes, and we've just got some syrup. Oh, hundred percent. I love that. I love the interrupters. Oh yes. So, anyways, what are you guys? Have you bought your tickets? Like, okay, yeah, so what already. venue are you going to? So I'm going to PNC Park in Pittsburgh Thank because you. on the uh, the weekend that we move in is the Philly date, so I wasn't able to get tickets near my city. But um, I'm actually, like I said, I'm really excited because even though I bought it like literally the day they started selling because 
you know, my friend is a really big Green Day fan, and I'm really a big fan of all three bands all together. Mm -hmm. So it should be a really good time. I'm really excited. And I also like the logo of the unicorn playing the guitar. Like, it's <laughs> everything about, alone I did everything enjoy about that. this concert is just so funny and phenomenal. I haven't bought my ticket yet, but I'm definitely Probably. buying for PNC Park because obviously Pittsburgh is the best city. Well, yeah, and I love when it comes down to yeah. it, it, they're coming to PNC Park, and I love that. I've seen a lot of bands at PNC Park. I'm very excited to see yeah, how I'm excited. those three absolute superstars are going to play. And having the interrupters there is just, it's just a and cherry Pittsburgh's on top. And Pittsburgh's energy will really get to it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, 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 can some, I can somewhat agree with that because, you know, like I said, I am going to that city. It'll be nice for, you know, a first time person being Philly, you know, native. If you go there it'll to be, the PNC be, Park and you go, oh, I wish I saw them in Philly, it's yeah, not going to be a good mean, show. It, it'll, be a good, it'll be a good time to experience and see, you know, like what it's like for a Pittsburgh concert. I'll be excited for it. But like I said, like they also have released really good songs lately too oh, on another 100%. note. Um, Father of All by Green Day with their releasing a new album yes. literally in February. Yeah. You know, Weezer's Van Weezer, I think, is yeah. doing the end of the game, and Fall Out Boy yeah. doing Dear Future Self. All three are oh, like yeah. so good the day that this was announced, just I blew me hoping. out of the water. It was phenomenal, all three I, of them. I definitely am hoping that they play some of their older stuff. Though. I do too. Like, oh, I feel, for well, sure. obviously, they're going to play the big ones. Oh, but yeah. like, I especially liked like certain older albums. The new yeah. this Weezer one yeah. didn't hit right, but like, I still love them as yeah, so what was your favorite song? I, I can speak personally on myself. I really, like, I'm a Green Day fan through and through. Like, oh, I even yeah. like I even like Wait, their more you recent stuff. make sure you wake them up tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. they are. It, it, they oh are my God. Waking up. <laughs> September <laughs> is almost over. September is almost over. I got to go and call up Green Day, make sure they wake Hello. up. Um, but I did like Father of All. Um, yeah. I don't know, like, personally, uh, Dear Future Self, I... It's not that I wasn't a fan of it. I just don't like new Fall Out Boy. Yeah, they, like oh, I know agreed. that's a very polarizing um, debate. Old Fall Out Boy, new Fall Out Boy. I old Fall Out Boy all the they, way. Oh, all, always. I, um, I did too. There are a few like hidden gems for the new one. Like um, the last of the real ones, I did like by the new Fall Out Boy album, and I did like Dear Future Self. I did like to a point. It used to be actually my favorite of the three songs, but now it's definitely like the third one because I've started yeah. to listen to the other two on like repeat. Well, I don't yeah. know if you guys ever have those albums that you can just put on no matter what, and you're just like, oh, this is fun. The one I always pronounce it wrong with the bears, like the yeah. full aid. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that what it yeah, is? I don't I think know. So. I don't we'll go called, with it. But I was like the ones with the bears because I can throw that on and be like, Great oh, album. yes. But I know that I have been a, huge, a, a little bit of a bigger fan of uh, Weezer, too. My friend mm -hmm. got me into them over the, this summer, actually. I've been listening to a lot of uh, their Teal album, which is oh, like... Yeah. Insane it's, 80s covers because 80s good. music is like my jam. That's literally what I go my so go-to music. Yeah. yeah. And then especially with like some of their older stuff, too. Like I just got into... Um, if you, uh, what is it called? Gratitude? It's, yeah, but it's also <laughs> like, uh, if you, um, I forget what it's called, but it's like, if you want to, I want you to, or something, that one yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. Just all the old stuff off yeah. of Gratitude. Um, I don't know if you've listened to Hurley. Hurley's a great yeah, album. Yeah, that is. Oh, Very wow. underrated. Hashpipe, Island of the Sun. It's yeah. like so good. All of them are. Um, I will say, though, I've seen only one of the three bands live before. I was in, I was in Pittsburgh, you know, mm -hmm. best city to go see a concert, yeah. uh, watching X-Fest in 2016, and it mm -hmm. was uh, Weezer. Uh, Panic at the Disco, and um, yeah. there was somebody else. Um, what's his name? I can't. I can't remember. I couldn't uh, tell you. I wasn't yeah, there. I can't, I can't remember who else was there. It was a. It was a stack lineup as well. Yeah, there were like six good. bands. I know Dorothy played. Swimmers played. They were both really good. I've oh, seen them good. before. The last time Fall Boy came around, I missed it because I was here. And then uh, the last time Weezer came to Pittsburgh was with the Pixies, and I planned yeah. on going. But then uh, I ended up in West Virginia, so I didn't. <laughs> it just, it just didn't work out. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like I'm excited. And then the fact that it was other bands because a lot of the people that I go to concerts with like don't exactly like them, but everyone I know at least likes one of the three. So yeah. like you yeah. see, that's great. So it's gonna be cool to see all these people get brought together. Like I know the first person I reached out to was my dad because oh, he was yeah. huge on Green Day, and I was like. You know, they're coming to Pittsburgh. He's like, got excited. He got, yeah. I told him about it, um, and he was real excited about it. So that's that should be interesting. I'll try to get him to go. But um, tickets are very, uh, going to sell very quickly. They're a little, they're they're pricey. A little pricey, too. And the but longer again, you wait, stacked, the longer so. you wait, too, the, like, the pop in price they're going to get. But yes. so, if you haven't bought any tickets for Green Day's Hell Mega Tour, highly recommend it. It's going to be a great show. Make sure to check out Father of All. Dear Future Self, and The End of the Game, which is all three of the new songs by all three of those phenomenal bands. And we will see you next week, rockers. Hope you buy your tickets. Jennifer Lopez took to Twitter this Thursday to confirm that she will be this year's Super Bowl performer. However, she won't be alone. Latin music superstar Shakira will also be performing with her which is especially exciting because she's just coming out of a performance hiatus. It's been a while. JLo specifically tweeted, this is happening, alongside the date of the Super Bowl and a photo of Shakira wearing a bicep cup 
cuff along with a Pepsi logo in the middle. For those of you who don't know, Pepsi is the halftime show's sponsor. So mark your calendars for February 20th, 2020 for what should be a fantastic halftime show. I'm telling you. What do you think, rockers? Are you excited for this halftime performance? Let us know at Twitter at IRBTV with the hashtag music news. If any of you are following the Jonas Brothers Instagram account, things got really, really weird Wednesday when the account got hacked, and it's not what you would expect. The Dastard League DJ Diplo took responsibility for hacking the account of the musical superstars that reaches 7.4 million people. Diplo even changed the profile picture to his own smiling face and posted not only pictures of himself, but memes aimed at roasting the three brothers. While we question the details of how Diplo got the password and all the publicity, the DJ and the pop band are teaming up on a new song for Diplo's country album. To close, although it may be a publicity stunt, or just Diplo taking some friendly jabs at the Jonas Brothers, it was still really funny to see. And some of the posts are still on the page, so check them out for a good laugh. Wow, I'm so excited to see J-Lo and Shakira perform together. Me too. I, they're going to be amazing. And it is really exciting to see Shakira performing again. I know, but what's even more crazy is, is that the Jonas Brothers Instagram got hacked? It's ridiculous. Why now? I know, and the fact that it may have been a publicity stunt is even more ridiculous. You're telling me. Well, anyways, rockers, don't touch that remote, because up next we have an epic Check This Out performance. Woo! What's up, rockers? Performing today on Check This Out is a member of IRB. His name is Stoker Wyzorik, and he is going to play an original song for us. Check it out. This song is called Find Yo. I'm searching for you And I haven't found you yet But I feel something Pulling us together
Hey Rockers, once again we're here with Stoker Wysorek. Um, he just played an original song for us. What was it called again? It's called Find You. Find You. That yeah. was a really good song. Thank you. Yeah, so um, do you know how long that is? How long? It seems like a really long song. Like that was a that was a meaty song. Yeah, it was kind of like um, I changed sort of the dynamics to, um, of it towards the end. Um, so I think that's kind of what made it a bit long, as well as not necessarily changing of any scale. It was mostly in the C scale the entire time I was doing it. But mm -hmm. um, if you want to ever check the time on that, I think it's like maybe three and a half minutes to four minutes. So it's a decent length, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I liked how you changed yeah. it up, like at the end, towards the end. That yeah, was yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's usually what I do. Um, I'm also working on another song that I might perform here later, but yeah. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you have been, you, you just came to IUP, right? This year you're a freshman? Yeah. That's, yes. you're already like everywhere. Cause you, um, I know you were on local limelight, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, also you do photography and your pictures have been on IUP's Instagram page, right? Mm -hmm. A couple of them have been featured. Yeah, three of them. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that's a big deal cause they have like, what, 10.4? thousand followers mm -hmm. yeah it's it's definitely an honor to be having my stuff featured on there because um, it's just you know uh, in music isn't my only thing that I do but it's definitely um, one of the big parts um, of my talents uh, I'm sort of geared towards like those organic talents such as like the music um, things with cameras um, photography and even visual spatial you know as well yeah, yeah. I'm trying to be writing a bunch of more songs, such as like, um, there's this one right now that I'm working on, it's called Equinox. And uh, it's technically, it's about kind of like the fall season and sort of what goes on around there. And um, I'm still kind of in the very early stage that I just came up with it today, but it's it's got oh. that fire, so yeah. It's got that fire. Yeah. Um, so what was the song that you performed today? What was that about? Do you want to tell us what that was? Yeah, about? yeah. So the song that I performed today, it's mainly about just how you can find somebody to sort of help you through life. Um, it can be very generalized. Um, and it's sort of self-explanatory. And whenever I, it's, it's very generalized. I don't want it to, you know, sound all like lovey-dovey and stuff like that, but it's definitely a song that um, is sort of like a call for, I don't know, just support. It's a very, it's a sort of supportive song. Um, the fact that somebody else is in your presence can make you just feel better. It's, it can be very simple, such as that. Mainly what I'm trying to go towards is just that person that can help you through, um, either if it's times, easy times, learn how to ration, you know, it, it, and I'm sort of getting into detail a little bit much, but yeah. No, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. We, we like details. Yeah. Um, that's cool, though, that you let your audience interpret it however they want to. Like, that's cool that you're, that's your goal is to let them be able to interpret it. Yeah, And yeah. not, like, say this is what it means, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, how, is you, how does your writing process what does your writing process look like when you write songs? Um, so here, I'll, um, it's very random actually. Sometimes I go off like the tune and I write words around that tune, but it okay. can be like if I was going to find a whole bunch of words that really, I don't know, they just sounded like they could be together and I could easily imagine a tune with it, like I would totally, you know, use that as, yeah, you get the point. Yes, yeah, yes, that's definitely. cool. And, the, um, and actually, how I uh, did the one today, Equinox, um, it was originally the words before the tune, but not in that kind of way. Like, I didn't Im immediately think of a tune after I was making that, after I was ma started to making that song, or, wait, let me think. No, after I was thinking about just what happens around the Equinox time, because that's when I'm making it now, because we're in the fall Equinox. And mm -hmm. so I thought that would be, huh, that's really cool. You know, I've always kind of liked, you know, how, colorful the trees look and stuff as well as like you know it's colder but somehow the air just has a different feel to it but it's kind of nice in a way yeah and you have a lot of holidays to look forward to and like family and stuff and so that's kind of what I'm trying to base my um, song off of um, and sort of everything around that so yeah so Stoker how long have you been playing guitar and you know into music how long have you been into music um, I've been into music most of my entire life um, 
One of the idols that I would, that kind of got me inspired to become a musician, um, his name is John Mayer, and I always like admired a lot of his music, mm -hmm. um, but also music from like movies as well, like the soundtracks, um, yeah. um, soundtracks like that, um, as well as like, you know, the classic vinyl. Um, my cousin, she sings a lot. Um, her name is Chloe Weisorek, and she does a lot mm -hmm. of jazz, and that's very inspiring too as well, um, just her style and sort of how she is driven by that kind of emotion in a way. It's not entirely what I'm going for, but I'm sort of seeing where it takes me at this point. So I'm just trying to, I'm trying to take in all that stuff that has that fire, so yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Um, have you been, obviously like I'm sure you have, you didn't start out writing music. So no. how long have you been writing for then? Um, I would say writing probably for about seven years and um, I've been playing the guitar for maybe a little less than that. Um, and I've been singing for pretty much my whole life, um, although I didn't really uh, take advantage of that until later, which I kind of regret. But honestly, you just keep moving forward from where you are. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Well, I think that's all the time we have today, Rockers. Um, but thank you so much, Joker, for joining us today. Mm -hmm. We love your song. And see you next week. Wow, what an awesome performance. Yes, thanks so much, Stoker, for joining us in the studio today. And bringing us to the end of our third episode already. Hey, time flies when you're having fun. True words have never been spoken, Sam. Anyway, make sure to tune in next week for another great episode with even more music. That's right. And also, don't forget to follow us on social media at IRBTV or at Indie Rockers Ball. And make sure to check out our YouTube page and, YouTube page and smash that like button and also subscribe for even more music news. We'll see you next week, rockers. Mm -hmm.